Let's just you drink your water first. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Cheeto, obviously, uh, this is a fight that you wanted against Dominic Cruz. You're fighting in his backyard. So I'm curious, what are the emotions now, just a few days removed from ahead of the fight? No emotions. Cold blooded. Uh, ready to go. I feel good with myself. Well, I feel great with all the work I put until this moment. And, you know, we, I can lie to everybody, but I can never lie to myself. And I know how ready I am. And, the type of work I put for this fight. So I feel I'm the best in the world right now and I can be a world champion at any night. So I'm ready to show that Saturday night. Well, you say no emotion, but Dom was in here earlier and he said he's still trying to figure out why you're mad at him. So why do you, why do you think he believes you're mad at him? I don't fucking know. I'm not in his mind. But we did a sit-down uh, sit interview face-to-face. -face. Did he tell you how mad it was? No. So... I I just speak the truth. Um, I keep it real. I don't think fighting is a pretty thing. I'm not I'm not in here to shake hands or bow to each other. Like if I want that, I will go to any other sport. But I like to fight, and the other sport I love in surfing, I wasn't that good to make this type of money. So I just do it for fun and I fight for a living. But you know, I ain't mad at nobody. I really have no emotion to anybody I ever fought. But when they give me a contract with a name and we get locked in a cage, I want to fuck you up. Simple. Then he had mentioned on Monday when he was on the MMA hour that you guys would be around each other training, maybe at the PI and stuff, and you would just verbally poke him, just like kind of poke at him verbally. So what exactly was he talking about? Well, the UFC offered me not once, but a couple times, like real offers. You want to fight Cruz in this date? And I say yes. The same way I say yes to the last 20 guys I fought in the UFC. And he declined like three, like three times. The reason? I don't know. I don't care. So I just make that public. I was like, hey, guys, I got to offer a fight. He declined. Tag him or talk shit. Or, fuck, who knows? I'm, I'm fun in Twitter, right? And when I see him face to face, I was like, hey, if you, you want to fight, let's fight. Like, you know, I just keep it real. I'm not going to just walk and sucker punch you. I, I'm not a bitch. But if you give me the, the wrong energy, I'm sure we're fighting. And looking at his, his skill set uh, in the octagon, when he came into the UFC, a lot of fans and pundits would call him unorthodox and unique with his footwork and head movement. Now, like almost a decade removed from that, is his fighting style still unique or is a lot of people just caught up to him? In the um, honestly, at the beginning, he was fighting a lot of 125ers. So I think you can do a lot of craziness when you're fighting guys that are like 20 inches or smaller than you. Like he fought Benavides, Demetrius, Favor. All those guys are like five foot two. Like they're not like for real. I'm not even talking shit on them. I respect them, but they're small guys. So that style can be successful like that. And I believe in, in this new timeline, even when he was a champion, he never fought Barrao. He never fought, you know, Frankie or Sanhagen or Dillashaw. Oh, well, he actually fought Dillashaw twice. But he don't fought the rest of the guys, like the new prospects, the good guys. So I'm like, I respect you as a fighter, but you haven't shown you get in there with the best of the best in this time because he was injured a lot and no, no, no shame on that, you know, but he didn't, he didn't fight like, you know, Sonja Dongs or guys like that. Are, they're coming in harder. They're winning fights. And Lupe was in here earlier and she said that, well, she's also fighting someone that trains out of San Diego and Angela Hill. And she said, given the large number of Hispanic fans here that she's expecting to be cheered, even though they're fighting in their backyard. Are you expecting to be cheered against Dominic Cruz or is it, are you, viewing this as like enemy territory i'm always cheer the way i fight people love it and i i get it i'm in san diego but i'm sure there's a lot of ecuadorians here there's a lot of ecuadorians in la but again at the end of the day it doesn't fucking matter the cage is locked it's me versus him boos or hurras fuck it it's a fight and finally last question for me what does the headline say after your fight on saturday 
epic finish. Chito, I asked Cruz this. I want to ask you. I believe this is the first time in UFC history that two commentators are actually going to fight each other. Do you feel like you'll be taking home extra bragging rights with that? Well, if I can move on and do a commentary for English, I can make a better bread. So maybe we can fight for that. Um, and then uh, just uh, in terms of your training, you've talked about it a lot. You've been in the UFC for a while now and changing just the way you approach everything just for yourself what are you most proud of in how you've grown with your skills since you've been at this level in the ufc i i do believe my first five ten fights in the ufc it was a lot of hard a lot of work but i didn't i i, didn't, I never had like somebody that set me up to the next level like guide me through that is being there with many fighters and i think that's our the credit i give to jason parillo i think he set me up to another level and he just put me, he just, he just, he just used my skill, my heart, my, my work ethic, and he just guided me through and he's been working pretty well. Now, to talk about Perillo a little bit, obviously a lot of big fights coming through the gym, Mackenzie, Rockhold, do you feel a little bit of pressure to kind of get the ball rolling for the whole team since all of you guys kind of in like the next month or so have a fight? Not really, man, because we win as a team, but most importantly, when, when things don't go our way, which is the, the worst side of the, the end, I know they're going to be there for me. I know the team is going to leave me up. But at the end of the day, we're getting that catch by ourselves. I know my teammates, my coach, my family love me. But at the end of the day, each of us have our own fight. Each, each of us prepare hard. So it's just they're not expecting me to win till they go and try and win. And the same to me. I work my ass off every day. And I expect nothing else than a good win. Thank you. Thank you. Hola, Chito. Eh, Morbilla para el Diario As de España. Eh, se dice que esta pelea puede ser la oportunidad para que después busques el camino hacia un cinturón. ¿Lo ves en ese sentido tú, que te pueda dar la oportunidad de esta, este combate? Claro que sí. Yo creo que un, un main event a cualquiera le puede servir para, un, para, para llegar al título. Yo, un, un main event te puede dar todas las oportunidades. Gané mi último main event, que fue mi primero, y estoy peleando otro enseguida. Significa que los main events te llevan al título. Hay muchas formas de llegar al título, pero ganando main events seguro es una de ellas. Lo dijiste ahora en inglés, eh, te sientes confiado ¿no? por tu camino y por el camino de Dominic, que decías que no se había enfrentado a los mejores. ¿Cómo lo ves este combate ya y hablar un poquito de, de tu rival? O sea... Yo lo veo como es, es una pelea dura al final del día, es un tipo que igual sale a pelear, tiene cardio, toma un buen golpe, lucha muy bien, o sea, en mi mente no va a ser nada fácil esta pelea, en mi mente no va a ser un poco más fácil que la anterior. Yo siempre que tengo una pelea, espero lo peor, para simplemente estar preparado. Si es una noche rápida, si es algo así, increíble, lo tomo, ¿quién no lo haría? No. Nadie se levanta diciendo, ay, quiero, quiero que me revienten la cara hoy día, pero... Si, si me preparo mentalmente para lo que sea, pues no tengo problema. Y de la forma que yo trabajo, sé que voy a salir ganador. ¿Qué nos dices del MMA latinoamericano? ¿En qué lugar lo pones tú como representante? Yo creo que cada vez somos más. Yo creo que cada vez vemos gente de habla hispana en main events, ganando peleas en la UFC. Y como todo en la vida, ¿no? es una evolución. Y creo que estamos poco a poco llegando a nuestro mejor momento. Perfecto, gracias. Gracias a ti. Chito, también si me permites, por acá en Español, Heriberto Muñoz, del periódico Frontera de Tijuana, precisamente ahorita lo que se hablaba del MMA latinoamericano, lo querías entrar en Ecuador, que me cuentes qué está pasando en Ecuador, digo, conocemos bien lo que ha pasado con Michael Morales, los hermanos Martinete que estén ahí también intentándolo, la victoria, obviamente, que, que visualizas, qué significaría para ti, para, para todo tu pueblo, ¿no? Pues es algo gigante, cuando, cuando yo peleo se paraliza el país, es como cuando juega la selección, todo el mundo está viendo, todo el mundo está apoyándome y, y es una razón más para salir a dar todo de mí, es una razón más para salir a, a matar y, y yo sé que esa noche puedo sentir la energía desde Ecuador, de la gente que realmente me quiere, que realmente quiere verme ganador y eso es lo que realmente cuenta en, en, el, en el deporte. Bien. Iba también un poquito a lo que comentabas ahorita en, en inglés de... 
el sentido de, de venir a, al lugar donde entrena Dominic? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo sé que lo ves de una forma muy particular? No sé si lo puedes decir en español, por favor. Pues para mí es una pelea, es una pelea. No, yo no tengo problemas si peleo con todos sus fans ahí o con todos sus enemigos ahí. Para mí, una vez que cierran las aulas, es él y yo. El resto realmente no importa si lo apoyan a él o a mí. Al final del día, nadie gritando afuera va a hacer algo por ti. Así que yo estoy listo para el día sábado. Te agradezco. En su última fight, uh, Munoz caught him really good en el primer round. I believe it was a left jab and then a left hook. I thought maybe it was done. And then he was able to come back and win that fight. Does that kind of emphasize to you that if you have a chance to put him away, to go ahead and just put him away and get that thing over? Um, the good thing about it is like I don't have any problems going five rounds. I don't have any problems digging deep. And I show that with 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 fun. I hurt him, and I just took my time. You know, a lot of people ask me like close people ask me like, did you really didn't want to finish him? I was like. <laughs> Fuck off. I want to get out of there as soon as possible. Like, yeah. fighting is too dark to stay there for too long. So, I was, I just took my time. I just, I'm just patient. I know I have a, a good mindset. I think I, I have a, a good skill set to, to find my way. I, I think a lot of fighters hurt the opponent and they go ape shit. And you can get tired. You can, the guy can recover and then you're all gassed out. You know, you don't have too many of those birds. Doesn't matter how, how hard you train. I run 15 miles. I was still getting tired. It doesn't really matter. There's a lot of emotions in there. So if I hurt him, I'm definitely going to try to finish him. But also, I'm going to be smart and remain focused because sometimes they don't want to go away. You know, they, they keep coming. They keep coming. And if that's the case, I'm going to give you a lot of damage. Uh, just one other question. I always ask fighters this in, in any fight combat sport. Would you say you've learned more from your victories over the years or your defeats? I think with the victories, I, you learn from both. Both give you something. But when you lose, you gotta really re evaluate everything around you and see what's going on. And I'm the type of guy that even if I, for, for a matter of fact, I can blame somebody, I will never do it. Because at the end of the day, it's up to me to kick that person out or change it or tell them they're not giving me what I need. So. You know, when I lost fights in the past, I really evaluate everything and I try to figure out why I lost, what happened in there, and see what, how were my emotions in there, like everything. And I really believe at the beginning I was fighting out of heart. Like, I don't have any amateur fights. I'm not a Jiu Jitsu world champion, kickboxing world champion. I was just a kid fighting on the street that get to a Jiu Jitsu gym and seven years later made it to the UFC with a record of six and one. So most of the people that came that green, they're not here anymore. I'm just glad and I'm just happy to have this heart that, that brought me all the way here. And now I have the tools. Hey, Chido. Um, there was a story you had told a little bit ago that I just wanted to get some clarification on. It was earlier on in your career and you're a guy that has a, you know, a fair amount of artwork like myself. Was it true that Sean Shelby scolded you for getting a neck tattoo? Yeah. Well, he did, he, when I get my first neck tattoo, I got this huge gorilla. And I really, I fucking like gorillas. So I got a big gorilla, kind of like a psychedelic look, maybe on mushrooms. And, and Sean Shelby was like, you're a fucking idiot. That's not cool. He honestly... I think he was just looking up to me, like kind of like protecting me, like, hey, don't do dumb shit at this point. And I get it. But the tattoos for me, like my mom is around, you can ask her. When I was like four years old, I would go to the corner store and they have and they sell like all these like kind of like real tattoos you, you can put on with water. And they will send me back from the school because I was neck all the way down. I would tell my neighbor. I would be like, hey, can you put those, those like angels and things like that on my back because I couldn't reach. And I would be full covered on fake tattoos. I don't know why. I just like tattoos. And I didn't finish my arms before I went to my neck because I said, fuck it. If I go to my neck, I have to finish the rest. So I think that was a smart move. I appreciate it, bro. Do you have any room for more? Oh, I have a lot. I have my whole stomach available. Mr. Cartoon is finishing my back. 
in a couple of weeks. I got a couple of spots on my leg. And then my head, I'm, I'm finishing my head soon too with Barry Craig, so I got space. How do you, has Mr. Cartoon done anything else on you? He did my whole back piece. How long of a wait was that? It was quick. Like, when you asked him to do it, because his books are like three years long. Not for me. We're cool. <laughs> uh, I I text him one day and and so this is what happened. Somehow because he have his cars, his show cars at Ruka, and the warehouse is where I train is in the back. So randomly, three fights in a row. He came on a Monday, and I fought that weekend. And I was like, the first time I was like, hey man, come on, give me a big piece. I was like, yeah, sure, talk to my assistant. So I talked to him, I was like, put me in. It's like, he's a little busy now. So three fights in a row, somehow, I get to Rook on Monday, you know, to just say hi to everybody, say thank you, whatever. Or he used to go back to the gym, and then he was there. And then I was like, come on, give me a, give me a, ba give me a back piece, give me a back piece. And then he's like, I'm free next week. I said, fuck it. And he told me, you want to do two sessions? I'm like, no, do it in one. He finished my whole back, almost finished my whole back in nine hours. We smoked some crazy shit before, so I was, I was numb. <laughs> I was numb. He got some good stuff in there. Can I ask how much that cost? Because like, doesn't, isn't his like minimum like $50,000 or something like that? Yeah, but he gave me athlete price. Is it, is it true that he checked his customer's credit before they come in? Maybe, maybe people here don't know. I, I went from... You know, he he have collapsed with Ruka. Actually, the shirt that I have on yesterday when I was signing, that's his line. So I think we're cool and I'm blessed with cool people around me. That's what is crazy. Like I, I get to meet everybody that when I was a kid, Mr. Cartoon in Tattoos, fucking I surf with Kelly Slater. Like it's like everything I like growing up is happening with me now. That's why I'm so fucking happy. Are there any other celebs that you haven't met that you need to meet? Um, maybe. Let me see. Who have you met? I think I surf or met all the surfers, world champions that I love growing up. Um, you know, Kelly, Rob Machado, Chain Doran. I fucking, I got to meet Joe Rogan. I fucking love that guy. So I think, I don't know, dude. A lot of people chase things. Those good things just came out to me, like going to New York, getting tattooed by Bird Crack, smoking a big wood with fucking Action Bronson. Like I don't, everything cool that I like or people I admire, they just, you know, it just mean to happen. It's just like, sometimes people chase the wrong things for no reason. And when you're, when you're not crazy chasing things, they just come to you. So, and I can just name things like that. Like I got to hang out or meet people that I look up to and it's, it's fucking cool. Good. Thank you guys.